Hello, my name is Guy Wallace, and I'd like to talk to you about the big picture of EPI, Enterprise Process Performance Improvement, a human performance technology methodology set. EPI is a two-stage approach to addressing and targeting enterprise process performance improvement. The big picture of EPI includes a look at the enterprise and breaking it down into functions and departments where we can begin to look at three different sets of processes. There's the core processes of an organization and there are the leadership processes of an organization and there are the support processes of an organization. We can use the organizational chart to organize our view of the processes that we need to manage and perhaps improve. First of all, when we look at a process, we must determine whether or not it's been designed to meet all stakeholder requirements. What's required depends on the balanced performance requirements of all of the stakeholders. The second thing we look at are the environmental assets that enable those processes to determine if they are adequate to the needs. That includes data and information, materials and supplies, tools and equipment, facilities and grounds, budget and headcount, and very importantly, the culture and consequence systems that exist. What is required depends on both the performance requirements and the human capabilities that are available. The third thing we look at are the human assets that enable the process performance given the environmental assets. Human assets bring several types of attributes and capabilities and values to the enterprise processes. There are awareness, knowledge, and skills, physical, psychological, and intellectual attributes, and personal values. What is required depends on both the performance requirements and the environmental capabilities available. Once we understand the process, performance, and enabler requirements through our analysis, we can begin to look at the provisioning systems within an organization. Those might include on an HR side of things, organizational and job design and redesign systems, staffing and succession planning systems, recruiting and selection systems, training and development systems, performance appraisal and management systems, and compensation and benefit systems, and reward and recognition systems. On the non-human side, we can begin to look at the information and data systems, material and supply systems, tools and equipment systems, the financial systems, the facilities and ground systems, and the culture and consequence systems that encompass the environment in which humans work within the process parameters. Determining the specific roles and responsibilities for these human asset management systems and the environmental asset management systems in your enterprise is the key to performance improvement. Again, we can look at the building blocks of an enterprise process performance architecture and do that at the departmental level. We can look at the leadership processes, the core processes, and the support processes. Note that many of these processes are shared. One department might own a process and have other departments staff working in that Again, if we find process performance issues, we go to the provisioning systems upstream and review those for the improvements that they might make in their departmental processes. We use the Epi Fishbone Diagram, adapted from the Ishikawa Diagram, to assess the adequacy of the enablers that support the process. First of all, again, we start with the process. Is it even designed? Is there a formal process that's being followed? Or is it informal and has great variability that might be attended to? Then we can look at the environmental assets to determine whether they're adequate to the demands, the requirements of the process or processes. And thirdly, we look at the human assets that enable those processes, given the environmental assets available. The organizations that provision the human assets, as well as the environmental assets, are different from my diagram on the left. You must use that diagram on the left to determine who is responsible for the provisioning of these asset enablers to the processes. 
When we do improvement, we're looking at usually the worker level at the bottom, the work that they do, the workplace itself, and the world in which it exists. There are many, many improvement methodologies that can be utilized to attack these four levels. My EPI processes targeting EPI includes stage one, the targeting effort itself, and that leads to one or more stage two efforts to actually fix the provisioning systems or the process itself to improve performance and or to maintain and sustain performance. Stage one starts off with project planning and kickoff, an analysis of the current state, a design of the future state, and implementation which determines which gaps to address using something akin to the Pareto analysis methods. Stage two is where the EPI intervention initiatives are undertaken. Again, one or more of these might be necessary in order to achieve the process performance improvement. Again, stage one often leads to more than one stage two efforts. No ISD practitioner and no performance improvement consultant can possibly know it all. Performance improvement requires a collaboration across many disciplines to be truly effective and efficient. My goal with EPI was to enable a smooth segue from PACT, my ISD methodologies, training in other words, to performance improvement consulting. PACT is a subset of EPI. Many of the tools and methodologies and techniques used in PACT are also used in EPI. Lean ISD, my 1999 book on the PAC processes, addresses instructional systems design at two levels, curriculum architecture design and at modular curriculum development or instructional activity development efforts. Those last stage two efforts, if you will, are the equivalent of ADDI. In 2011, I updated the Lean ISD book into these five books. These addressed PAC by ISD methodologies for performance-based training and development. In 2011, I also wrote this book, From Training to Performance Improvement Consulting, so that PAC practitioners could make an easy segue into the world of performance improvement consulting. This is all about performance competence, which is the ability to perform tasks to produce outputs to stakeholder requirements at the worker level, at the work level, at the workplace level, and at the world level. That's it, that's the big picture of EPI, Enterprise Process Performance Improvement. If you're interested in more information about this, contact me through my website at www.epic.biz. Thank you and have a great day.